things off. Um, we're going to start in the UK uh, and we're going to come first to Will Gavin for TalkSport. What a treat. First up. Uh, hey, Ria, how are you doing? <laughs> Good, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. Uh, look, let's start off with asking uh, about how this match this weekend came to be, because we heard a huge amount about how you were going to be debuting after Mania and had the whole, the whole idea set up for you. And now you're thrust into this storyline of you seeking redemption from last year. So tell us a bit about the ideas, how that came about and how wild that change has been. To be honest, it was sort of like, a real quick change like it was something that I wasn't really expecting like I didn't expect to be on Wrestlemania this year it's just something that I didn't really see happening um I was actually sitting in catering for like a good month to two months I can't even remember it felt like forever <laughs> but I was sitting there just eating away just watching watching the shows biding my time and trying to like pick the best opportunity and then the day where uh, Asuka wrestled Peyton, it was just the right day. And they were like, yep, this is your time. I'm like, sweet. I mean, I'm up for anything. I can do it. This is my one shot. Might as well like go for it. <laughs> That's how this business goes. Like you have to really take your shots and you have to really shoot for the stars with them and do your best because people see that and then you end up with WrestleMania matches. So <laughs> that's pretty much how this all came along. <laughs> We're going to come next to AJ Singh at Wrestling News in India. Hi, Ria. Nice to meet you. So we know that you're a big Dragon Ball Z fan and your ring gear at WrestleMania last year paid homage to Vegeta. So what can fans expect from your ring gear this year? Oh, man, I don't want to give anything away, but I'm just going to say it's not anime this year, unfortunately. Last year, I did do the Vegeta theme, which I absolutely loved. And it was something that I got to tick off my bucket list, something that I did in Australia as well. So I was like really happy to bring that to WWE. But this year, I'm going a little bit more Rhea Ripley, um, darker colors. It's got a little bit of a theme, but it's got like a couple different things that are just sort of like smooshed together. I don't know if anyone's going to really notice, but like it's a couple of different things that I just find like that they're appealing so I just like their visual and I've just tried to like combine them together to be honest I haven't seen my gear yet so I'm really really excited <laughs> to see what it looks like but I I made my jacket and I know that that's pretty epic so <laughs> let's come next to Leonardo Torres at El Camacho hey Ria it's Leonardo Torres from Peru hope you're well Ria, what it means to you to be a part of the biggest stage of all, like WrestleMania? And you just say that there will be more Rhea Ripley. What do you mean by that? To be a part of WrestleMania, it's really like a dream come true. It's something that every single wrestling fan watches in awe. It's like the biggest thing in the whole year for wrestling. So being a part of it is extremely special. Um, me bringing more Rhea Ripley to this one, um, it's definitely more of an NXT UK really. I've gone to the point where I just don't care anymore. I've learned a lot from my mistakes over the last year. And I've gone and I've watched my WrestleMania match with Charlotte over and over again. And I've seen the flaws in myself and I'm trying to fix them. And I'm really just trying to bring the brutality to this match. Because I, at the end of the day, like I want to win. I want to be Asuka. I want to be the Raw Women's Champion. So I'm definitely bringing more of myself into this match. Let's come next to Christian Bruns at Power Wrestling in Germany. Hey, Ria. So I remember we did a call early last year and talking about going to Raymond James. And then suddenly, of course, the pandemic hit and everything yeah. was different. WrestleMania moving to the PC. Um, what was the, the emotional um, like ride for you back then? You're still young, maybe thinking, oh, my, I will get my opportunity to, to perform in front of so many people. In the future, or was it like a bummer? And also, like you mentioned, this year it was also like, like a like a rider having this great rumble moment, and then sitting in catering, as you just mentioned. So um, interesting couple of months for you, a year for you. Yeah, it, my my career in WWE has definitely been a wild roller coaster of different emotions. Um, last year, I was upset because it got moved to the PC. Like, I'm not going to say that I wasn't upset. Um, And I was upset because I knew that my parents weren't going to make it down to watch my match in person as well. So knowing that they weren't going to be here was the most impactful on me. 
Um, but apart from that, like I had to just keep reminding myself that like this is still WrestleMania and it's still like a huge deal. And it's like my first ever WrestleMania. And at the end of the day, like I'm making history. <laughs> it was like the first uh, WrestleMania in front of zero fans. It was the first time an NXT championship was defended at WrestleMania. I, I made history in a couple different ways and I found that really, really special. Um, going into this year, though, it definitely does have that WrestleMania feel to it. Um, even though last year was still amazing, still a great first WrestleMania, this year definitely feels a little bit more special just because I know that there's going to be a crowd and I can actually connect with the people that are there um, and all around the world. So I'm very, very excited. <laughs> we'll come next to Razine Gutta at the South African in South Africa. Hi, Ria. So you spoke a little bit about making history, and I read that you're also going to be making history if you win the title by being the first woman to have held the NXT Championship, NXT UK Championship, and a main roster title. So I want to know how you feel about that, and also how do you feel, what, what do you think that fans can expect from this match with Asuka that's going to be a little bit different maybe from what we've seen before and what we're going to see this weekend? Yeah, so it's it's actually really, really cool that I'm going to be the first person to hold the NXT UK, the NXT and a main roster, like the Raw Women's Championship. I find that incredible and I can't wait to <laughs> knock that off my bucket list because I am very confident in myself. Um, but going into this match with Asuka, I know that it's going to be very, very hard hitting. Definitely. She's one of the best at what she does. And this is going to be a very grungy, very brutal sort of match. So you're going to, you're going to see us pretty much kick each other's teeth out because we've already seen that with Oscar and she's tough as, like she's tough as nuts. So it's going to be a lot like that. It's just going to be very, very rough and I can't wait. That's how I love to wrestle and it's going to be fun. <laughs> Let's come next to Maximilian Gamo at Wii Sport in France. Um, good morning, Ria. First of all, how are you? Good. How are you doing, mate? <laughs> very good. Very good. It's an honor to be here. Um, you've had some great matches with Bianca Belair during your time in NXT. Um, this year, you were the final two in the Royal Rumble match, and now you find yourselves in very similar situations uh, heading towards WrestleMania. Uh, have you two talked uh, since your debut on Raw? And if so, uh, how helpful has it been to share those crazy couple of weeks uh, with someone you know so well? Um, yeah, we've, we've talked a couple of times about it and we both still can't believe that it's happening. Um, it's super cool to be able to go through this journey with someone like Bianca. I, when I first started in NXT, she was already there and I've seen her go through so much and vice versa. She's seen me go through a lot as well. So to know that we both could be in uh, the Royal Rumble together was absolutely insane. Like I really wanted to stay in. I wanted her to stay in long enough uh, for me to come in and, I really wanted to wrestle her again because I do miss being in the ring with Bianca. So to be the last two competitors in the Royal Rumble was really, really magical. It was a real special moment for both of us. And I think for a lot of people that watch NXT as well. Um, but going into WrestleMania and both having like similar matches, I think this is the beginning of the future. And I'm very, very excited for the future. And I know that she's absolutely going to kill it. I, I believe 110% in her. I think she's going to walk out with the gold and hopefully I can do the same, you know, like hopefully I can beat Asuka and hopefully she beats Sasha and we can really take over the uh, division. Let's come next to Marco Ecole at Correa della Sport in Italy. Hi, Rea. Uh, nice to meet you. Hey. Um, after Charlotte Flair last year and Asuka this time, is there any other opponent who you would like to face uh, in your dream match uh, at WrestleMania? Oh, that's a tough question. There's a lot of people that I want to wrestle at WrestleMania. Like, I want to wrestle Sasha, Sasha. I want to wrestle Bailey. I want to wrestle Becky. I want to wrestle Alexa. I want to wrestle everyone. It's, it's a real difficult question to narrow it down. One person that, like, I would love if she came back, and if she did, I would love to have a WrestleMania against her is Beth Phoenix. I think that would be absolutely amazing. I just want to step in the ring with her because she's such a badass. And... <laughs> I really want to see exactly how tough she is. I know that she's tough, but I want to see if I can stand in the ring with her. I think that'd be a really epic match. We'll come next to Ash Rose at WWE Kids in the UK. Hi, Rhea. How are you doing? Good, mate. You? 
I'm good. Good to speak to you as, as always. I just wanted to pick up on the Bianca point that from my colleague there as well, that it seems now that we're, you guys are part of this new generation and we've had the four horsewomen for a long time. Um, it seems like we're slightly moving on from that. If you could pick two more, who do you think will take it along with yourself and Bianca Barra? Who do you think will make up the next kind of big women's personalities and wrestlers on, on, across Raw and SmackDown? Man, um, I love my NXT girls, so I'm going to have to pick two of them. I think they're all up and coming top athletes and I love every single one of them. I'm going to have to pick Raquel because I know how much she's improved over the last few years and she's really, really rising to the occasion and taking over in herself. Um, and then it's a tough choice because I, I would want to pick Io or Dakota or even Candace. So it's really, really difficult. Like I don't like leaving people out, but I feel like Io because she was champion for so long and she had gone through the whole roster and she's someone that's beaten me on a few different occasions and that doesn't really happen too often. So <laughs> I know she's tough. <laughs> so probably Io and Raquel. <laughs> Let's come next to Vicente Beltran at Marca in Spain. Hello, Ria. How are you? Good, mate. Yourself? Very good. Thank you so much for the time, first of all. Uh, I would like to ask you because uh, you've been working lately as a babyface, but uh, last Monday we saw some uh, strange turns against uh, Asuka. So uh, how do you feel more comfortable working as a babyface or working as a heel? I feel more comfortable going out and kicking butt. So pretty much being the nasty version of myself, I feel a lot more comfortable doing that. Um, whether people like me or hate me, I mean, for some reason, when I was doing this same thing in NXT UK, people loved me. So I was trying to be the bad guy as much as possible, but people still love me for some reason. And that's why I ended up turning face. Um, but over that time in NXT, like I grew very, very soft and I, I just didn't like it. I started helping people, but then people weren't helping me. So it's time to go back to the old Rhea Ripley and just take everyone out and get what I want. Let's come to uh, Riju Dasgupta at Sports Kida in India. Hey Rhea, hope you're doing well. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hey, hey. So, uh, yeah, my question is, uh, so uh, WWE President Nick Khan recently stated that uh, Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey are slated to come back in the not so distant future. Are they two performers that you would want to face? And uh, what are your thoughts on their return? Yeah, I would love to face both of them. Um, I had a little taste of being in the ring with Becky back in NXT before Shayna uh, Jessamine and Marina came out and absolutely destroyed that moment of mine. But <laughs> I would love to step in the ring with Becky and even Ronda as well. I think that we could really have a great match together and it'd be something different. It'd be f something different for me. And I, I like different. I like to experience being in the ring with everyone. And if they came back, like, put me in, put me in coach. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's come next to uh, Luis Rodriguez at El Universal. Hi, Ria. How are you? Good, mate. So everything's fine. Thank you. Uh, Ria, when you signed the contract for this match, Asuka said that you have the talent, but you're not ready. What will Ria Ripley do at WrestleMania to show that you're ready to beat her and to be the new Raw Women Champion? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to give away my strategy, but the way that I prove that I'm ready for Asuka is by beating Asuka on the grandest stage of them all at WrestleMania and becoming the new Raw Women's Champion and taking over the division. I'm not going to say too much in depth of my arsenal, but I'm going to bring the brutality. As my song says, I'm very, very excited and hyped for this match. So I'm going in and I'm going to go in as tough as I can. I'm getting ready every single day and I'm going to bring everything that I have, everything in my back pocket. I'm going to use it all because I know that Asuka is a, an amazing athlete and I've watched her for years now. So I sort of know how she works. I don't know if she really knows how I work yet. I don't know if she knows all my moves. So hopefully I can surprise her with something. <laughs> 
Let's come to Jade Hanu at VL Media in France. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, what was your reaction when uh, you learned that your entrance music will be, will be played live at WrestleMania? I was so happy, so happy. I actually got straight on um, Instagram and messaged Ash Costello myself. And I was like, is this really happening? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, like we have it planned. We have it in the works. And I was like, just so surprised and so excited because like New Year's Day is a band that I've listened to for a long time now. And I really do enjoy their music. And Ash, I've met her before and she's a lovely human. So I'm very excited to be able to share the stage with her. And also because of the pandemic, they haven't been able to do concerts or performances and I know that they've been missing that a lot. So it's a great opportunity for both of us to do what we love and share the stage and just have a great time. I'm so excited. <laughs> We're going to come next to Louis Dangor at WrestleTalk in the UK. Thank you very much for taking the time, Ria. Uh, I think when yourself and Asuka were booked in the match, there was a, um, I guess, expectation and speculation amongst fans that Charlotte Flair might be added to the match, considering the history that you guys have with Charlotte, uh, particularly at WrestleMania. Uh, was that something you were kind of expecting? And um, how do you feel that now, sort of three or four days before WrestleMania, it is just going to be you and uh, Asuka? Yeah, I was expecting something like that to happen, um, but it hasn't. I hope that everything in Charlotte's life is doing uh, great. I hope that she's mentally good, physically good. I don't really know what's going on with all of that. Um, but I am very excited to step in the ring with Asuka. If Charlotte got added to the match, like I wouldn't complain. I think it would still be an amazing match and it would be a lot of fun and hopefully I could get some payback for last year. But since I'm stepping into the ring with only Asuka, I'm still super excited because she's someone that I've wanted to wrestle for a long, long time. I actually saw a match of hers in Japan when I was there at 17 years old. We were on the same show and I remember just like watching her and I'm like, she's amazing. Like this chick is crazy and she's just badass and uh, just amazing, you know, just fully amazing. And then it's funny to come full circle and now I get to wrestle her at WrestleMania. So it's definitely a dream match of mine and I'm very, very glad that it's coming true. We're going to come next to Stephanie Fonchom at Steel Chair in France. Steel Chair magazine is in UK, but uh, no problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm French, but it's uh, British media. Thank you, Ria, for your time. Uh, how do you feel? Oh, I'm super excited. I'm nervous. I've got like a million emotions going through my body. I've been so busy <laughs> this last week as well. So That's like fantastic. I've had a million things. Yeah, so it's, it's um, great. It kept me busy. <laughs> I, I know that you're a great fan of Japanese wrestling and you wrestled in Japan. Um, and I wanted to ask you about um, NXT UK just signed one of the biggest Japanese wrestler, uh, female wrestler on, on the planet. Uh, one of the biggest female wrestler, period, in Meiko Satomura. Um, Is it someone that you are a fan of and you want to wrestle one day? Thank you. Of Aaron. course. Of course. It's funny because I actually, I also wrestled her in Japan when I was 17. I wrestled her in a tag match. And at that time, I didn't really realize how big of a deal she was. I knew that she was something special because the way she looked, the way she acted, the way everyone treated her. But I didn't actually like realize. But looking back on it now, I'm like, oh my God, like I got to step in the ring with wrestling royalty pretty much. Like she's absolutely amazing. And if I could have another match with her, like a one-on-one -on -one proper match with how I am today, I would love it. I wouldn't say no. I'd say yes in a heartbeat. So hopefully one day that does happen. With her in NXT UK, like it might make it a little bit difficult for me, but one day I really, really do hope to step in the ring with Mako. We'll come next to Oliver Browning at Give Me Sport. Hey, Ria, thanks for your time. Um, it's interesting that a couple of people have mentioned Bianca Belair already because 
she actually mentioned last month that she sees the two of you specifically as leaders of the next generation of the women's evolution in WWE. Have you given much thought about that yourself? And do you think that WrestleMania for the pair of you can be a real watershed moment, much like the, the four horsewomen debut, debuting in 2015? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny because it's super weird for me. I, I take things in, but I take things in a lot slower than other people. And I hear things going on like around me, people say stuff to me and I'm like, nah, like that's not what's going on. But like, if I really look at it, I'm like, yeah, like we could be a part of this new like women's division that's coming up. And I really am so proud that like it's us and I'm so excited that it's us. Um, but it's just wild to think that I'm making this sort of an impact. Um, Cause I don't really look at myself like that. Like I don't look at myself as anything special, but it's wild to think that everyone around me is pointing this out. And I'm like, you know what? It's sort of true. Like Bianca and I are the start of the future and we're, we're showing everyone exactly what to expect in the next few years, because everyone in NXT, the whole women's division, they're all working so hard and they're growing as performers and people and athletes and once they come up to Raw and SmackDown, like, we're going to take over. As simple as that. We're going to take over. And I'm so excited for that time. Let's come to Saul Cano at Diario Record. Hey, Ria. How are you doing? Hey. Good. So? I'm fine. Um, based on your, on your experience only in the previous days, and do you think there is more pressure entering WrestleMania as a champion or as a challenger? Pressure? Pressure. There's, all, there's always pressure. Uh, with wrestling, everything is so stressful for me because I'm a perfectionist. So going into WrestleMania, as the NXT Women's Champion, there was that pressure of losing my title. And I think that really got to me where over the last year, like I've definitely grown outside of wrestling and in wrestling. So going in to this year, there's, a, there's less pressure because I have nothing to lose. Asuka has everything to lose. I just came out and I challenged her for the championship. She accepted, so she has everything to lose. So this year there's a little bit less pressure but there's still that pressure because it's WrestleMania and it's a huge like platform. It's a huge deal. It's the biggest show of the year. And it's the first time that we're having fans in attendance, which I'm really, really excited for. So I, there's still pressure, but I feel like there was a little bit more pressure going in as a champion. Let's come next to Matty Paddock over in the UK. Hi Ria, thanks for your time. Um, hey. I'd love to talk about one of your um, favourites, kind of from your formative years in, in The Miz, really, as I've read a fair bit about how he was uh, someone you were really keen on watching. Um, I'd love you just to talk a little bit about how he may have influenced you, certainly maybe from a, any kind of heel perspective, but also now that obviously you're on the same brand, have you managed to kind of um, erase the memories of, of the awkward kind of first <laughs> meeting you had with him when I know you, you kind of chickened out with talking to him for the one of a better phrase. Have you managed to kind of uh, make good on that now? Um, so I actually haven't had too many conversations with him. I've only said things in passing or like I've tried to like say funny things and I'm like, I just walk away. I'm like, I can't do it. But <laughs> the reason that I like the Miz so much growing up is because he just had that attitude that was sort of like Vegeta where he was snarky. He didn't care. He was cheeky. He played games with people and I don't know it was something that really like drew me to him I really loved watching him do his promos and his matches uh just watching him like chicken out at times and run away from people like I just thought it was absolutely hilarious I'm like I would probably do that too like <laughs> so it, it was just something that spoke to me about him and the way that he speaks on the microphone that was definitely one of the main reasons that I think I enjoyed watching him so much because he speaks so confidently and it's something that I have never really been able to do. Like I've always been a shy kid. I was always really terrified of talking in front of people, even talking on the phone. Like it's a phobia of mine. I don't like talking on the phone. So I don't like talking on the microphone either. <laughs> so watching him go out there and just be so confident and fluent with everything that he says and also bring that snarky little uh, cheeky attitude with him. Um, I really got drawn to that. 
We've got time for a couple more. So we'll come first to uh, Andre at Route Music in Germany. Hi, Ria. Thanks for taking the time. So I would hey. like to ask you, uh, who had the biggest influence on the fact that you wanted to start with the wrestling business and who had the most impact after you joined NXT? So the reason that I started wrestling and that I wanted, wanted to start wrestling is because I saw a match with Triple H and Ric Flair. So that was the first glimpse that I had of wrestling. And I thought it was so brutal. Like I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like it's very violent and I enjoy watching it. So why don't I continue this and maybe try it out one day? Um, I had done every single sport that you could think of. So wrestling was something different to me. And I sort of got drawn to it from that match. Um, As for being in NXT, the person that really helped me the most was Scotty Too Hotty. He's someone that had believed in me the entire time. I was in his class for three months with Raquel and we were the only two females in that class. Um, and even though like at times I get told that I wasn't doing good enough, I wasn't improving, I was pretty much crap at what I was doing which is something that's really hard to take in, especially when you're someone that really loves wrestling and loves what they do and puts in 110% every day. He was always that one that was there to pick me up when I felt the worst. And he would always tell me that I was doing fantastic. I was improving and I'm going to be a big star. So Scotty Too Hottie is someone that's really helped me through this business. And without him, I don't think I would have lasted. I'd probably be in Australia right now. Let's get our final question from Miguel Uceda at Mundo Deportivo in Spain. Hi, Ria, how are you? Good, mate, yourself? I'm fine, thank you so much. It is a huge pleasure. So my question is, what are the, the differences in the dynamics of the main roster and NXT? Um, to be honest, it's not really too much of a different dynamic. It's sort of just like a couple different little bits and pieces that you have to learn along the way. And it's very strange for me because it's sort of like going to a new school and being the new kid all over again. So like you have to work your way back up the rankings, which is something that like I always struggle to do. That's why I sort of just jump straight to the top. <laughs> But the dynamic in NXT, it was definitely a lot more laid back. Um, which I really did love. Like it was all about the wrestling where now it's still about the wrestling, but it's also about a TV show and um, just making it perfect for the viewers. So that's the one thing that I really have to like uh, get used to and like just remember it's a little bit more stressful because there are a lot more eyes on, on this product, but I think I'm doing okay. 